Hey everyone, Daisy Ridley will not be in the next batch of Star Wars movies. Mark Hamill is happy that he's out after this uh, Star Wars movie and Jedi Fallen Order has dropped 25 minutes of footage. What's the point? I might as well just watch other people play it. Why do I need to play it? I'll enjoy it that way like a Twitch stream. Maybe I'll watch Ken Naxxok who should be sitting in my seat right now playing Jedi Fallen Order. I'll get my jollies that way. Well, as I said, I'm John Roca sitting in for Ken Naxxok. Gonna do the news, but that's the man right there, Christian Harloff. He's hosting this show. Take it away, sir. <laughs> I don't know. Should I even bother? It's a hell of an intro. Uh, Ken Napsock is eating a donut on the side of a highway somewhere, and I'm get stuck with uh, with Billy Blowhard over there. Uh, but well, thank you, John, for opening up the show. It is very nice to have everybody back. It is the Star Wars show here uh, from Collider, the Collider Jedi Council, joining us. Roka Fett, we already know, God forbid, we want him to talk again. We'll get, we'll get back to him in a second. But joining us on the table, she's back. It is the Gran, the Moth, the Nemiroff. Hello, how are you? Happy to be here. Good Happy to, to be here. It's going to be an interesting ride today with this guy. Yeah, here. it is. It's going to be good. Cats in Star Wars. Perry Nemiroff wants to know. I'm There's sure a love be. cat. There's a, lo a, lo a love cat, yeah. yeah I guess that counts. That's Dewey's like, favorite uh, Star yeah. Wars toy if at Chewie home. counts as a dog, that counts as a cat. Who calls Chewie a dog? Everyone. All right. Fair it was enough. based off of Lucas's dog, for God's sake. <laughs> That's true. That's a fair point, yeah. actually. Yeah, I've heard that before. Well, let's jump into the news here. This is coming to us from the so Star Wars movie news. Yeah, Star You're new Wars to the movie show, but the way Star we started Wars off normally is... Oh, there you go. Okay, do whatever there you want, Sean. Go ahead, go for it. Wow. <laughs> Let's just admire that graphic for a minute. Go ahead, pal. <laughs> Brand new to the show. Bump, 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 uh, okay, Star Wars movie news. Let's jump into this thing. Uh, it, this, we get a little... Uh, Mark Hamill, as you may know, is playing uh, your buddy there in the new Child's Play reboot that's out right now. Not doing so well in the theaters. Certainly liked by at least one person on this panel. Uh, but he is has been doing the voice here, and they've been talking to him, interviews, doing the press row, all that jazz. Well, the Associated Press was talking to him, and they asked him about Star Wars and this latest installment. And he said, quote... Uh, about Luke Skywalker. He said, well, because Luke Skywalker had closure in the last one, the fact that I'm involved in any capacities only because of that peculiar aspect of the Star Wars mythology where if you're a Jedi, you get to come back and make a curtain call as a Force ghost. Christian, this strikes me as almost like, yeah, this is why I get to come back. It's not really a big deal in the story. This is what I'm doing. What's your point of view? We know he's had um, a love-hate relationship since Last Jedi with this whole version of these... Uh, 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 pre well, these uh, trilogy of movies, what do you think about his response here? Well, I mean, look, I think the first thing that it's just an open confirmation that he's coming back as a Force ghost. Yeah. And I think that that's something that we hadn't got yet. But I think everybody assumed that anyway. Everybody kind of knew that. I mean, there were some people that wondered, would we was J.J. going to retcon, and is he going to be alive somehow or another? And then nobody really thought that it necessarily would happen. So him coming back as a force ghost and him confirming as much mm -hmm. makes sense to me. But I also think, I think people are making a little bit too big of a deal of the fact that when he said, uh, they asked him if he's coming back, he's like, or asked him if he was done, he said, yeah. I hope so. It's just, he's been playing the character for a long time. Mm -hmm. He came back in this trilogy, he's exhausted from it. The next movies aren't gonna be, as we find out from Daisy Ridley anyway, aren't really gonna be about uh, these people. And, and, and it's over for, for this. This is the end of the Skywalker lineage here. Mm -hmm. This is the end of it. So, uh, you know, it's it, people, anytime he opens his mouth, whether it's on Twitter, people have a story to say about it because he is pretty open about yep. this stuff. But I think the biggest story here is the confirmation with, with the Force Ghost. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that was something that I expected and I was kind of rooting for. I mm -hmm. liked the conclusion that his character got in the flesh, at least in the last movie. And given another topic we're going to talk about today, which is the translations for all the different uh, Episode Nine titles in various countries around the world, mm -hmm. I think the fact that he confirmed he's coming back as a Forest Ghost serves all the theories that I've had about what this movie and what that title could mean mm -hmm. going forward. So I'm kind of glad that he just put it out there so we don't have to sit here and speculate yeah. on something that seemed obvious to begin with. You just knew it anyway. The question is, how much is he going to be involved? Um, to be honest with you, I don't think he's going to be in the movie that much. Yeah, uh, I'm I, starting to lean in the other direction. Yeah, Ooh, you think it's gonna be in the yeah. movie a lot? Yeah, I, yeah. I, I like. I don't know oh. if you you want to jump ahead, but like when all right when look, we get we to don't, the, I, there's one when thing we get to you the guys titles. know. No, we first of all, whatever you want to talk about, talk about. Okay. We don't have okay. to, we don't have to go topic by topic. Whatever well, whatever you want to talk about. Going over. to those topics in the different translations, yeah. like if you go like what what is it? In, uh, Japan, it's Dawn of Skywalker. Yeah. In Polish, uh, one of the words uh, translates to resurrection or rebirth. That's what I've been thinking about. Rise 
rise of Skywalker ever since we first saw that trailer and heard the title is that Skywalker is going to be a new version of the Jedi yeah, yeah, Order. Yeah. And I think that he is going to have a bigger influence because, again, I'm skipping ahead, but I think he's going to show himself as a Force ghost to both Kylo and Rey as one last-ditch effort mm. to bring them all together. I can't say if it's going to happen because, obviously, I don't know anything. And I don't really even know what, you know, my speculation brain, what path it's heading down right mm. now. But I think he's going to try to influence both of them and we're going to be left in a position where Skywalker is just the new Jedi Order and his influence is felt big time in whatever path Rey takes. Over or under, see we're on the same page here then from conversation because I don't. I think he's going to have enough of an impact because I think if you look at the trailer itself, he's having a conversation with her saying that he's passed on everything that all the Jedi know, almost being like a beacon for all the Jedi in general. But over under 20 minutes for Luke hmm. Skywalker. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say under, but I still okay. I still do think even if we're talking about let's say a two hour fifteen minute movie, I still think that let's say it is twenty minutes on the dot, that is going to feel like weighty material. Okay, all right, so we're on the same page. Yeah. I don't think he's in the movie more than fifteen minutes. I well, think he, he, he may not physically be in the movie, but I sense like we just saw with Spider Man Far From Home that the presence of him will be throughout the movie. They'll probably be spoken about, hmm. referenced, what have you. Yeah, so yeah. he may not physically appear for more than 20 minutes, uh, but he'll certainly be felt throughout, okay. echoing <laughs> through. I think that's certainly possible. And I would say with these words, it seems a bit like, like he just does not like this trilogy of films and what they did with his character. I think there'd be a different response if he did, in my personal opinion. I think emotionally- A little more excitement. A little more excitement, mm -hmm. a little more like, I'm looking forward. It, it is gonna be sad to say goodbye to this character who I've loved for so long, right? right? The fact that he's being playful about he, he feels that, in my opinion, he's done I, with it. I look at things in more an emotional place than more brainy place, more emotional place. And to me, I sense that he's like, well, this is this is the way I'm going to talk about it because if I talk about it any other way, I'll slide into anger again, like I did with Last Jedi a number of times. It's and got weird. In trouble for it. I'm kind of like, even though I am a fan of Last Jedi, if and I don't want to put words in his mouth, but if he mm. does feel that way, I'm kind of glad that he could just voice his honest opinion because I don't know. What are they going to do? Fire him? Yeah, it's never been his issue. It's not even just about like what are they going to do? Right. Fire him? Right. It's it's about the fact that he cares about what happened to the character. I mean, yeah. there's oh, so sure. many actors out there who could have been a part of major franchises and been like whatever i'll just read well, yeah. my lines and then be done with it he cares well, he and that's cares. cool yeah well, it's, it's the role that started his yeah. whole career it gave him everything that he's got yeah. and and he he's been very vocal he he's to this day yeah. he doesn't like where where when he doesn't like the fact that he didn't get to be on screen with both carrie and uh and, and harrison yeah he doesn't like the fact the way that they that the, what they did with him the way that it started out and if you look you know it was significantly different from the end of because he was also told two different things because the end of episode seven originally he was supposed to mm -hmm. be moving rocks and he was mm -hmm. supposed to be all powerful and he wasn't cut off from the force so he thought he was going to get that version of himself that he always envisioned so he was, he was cool with coming back and then he was told something completely different it's like actually you know we're going to switch this up and you're now disconnected from the force yeah. and you're not powerful anymore because you don't want to be and, and he's like well that's not how and he said this this is on record he said it many times that's not how luke would be that's not what would happen yeah. but he's a professional and he did his job and he did a great job mm -hmm. one of his best performances probably that, he, that he's done Agreed. so far um but yeah i think he's over it i think yeah. he's done with the fact that he's also done with the fact of the scrutiny online he's done with all these things and he's mm -hmm. openly said it many times he's a dc hardcore fan he's a, he loves the dc movies he loves yep. he loves the dc comic books he, he, that's that's his thing and that's his passion mm -hmm. uh, it's where his son is is nathan, right, nathan is, is yeah. the hardcore star wars fan which is crazy when you think about it i brought this up to nathan who's on the mm -hmm. show is that uh you know you growing up with it you're probably like oh god more star wars and he wants he wants more star wars more star wars <laughs> uh but anyway yeah i think that i think that uh he's just done with it in general and i also think that it's one of those things that where they said we're done with the Star Wars, the Skywalker saga. Yeah. And this is why I'm hoping, crossing my fingers, beating the drum that the next movies are set between a thousand to three thousand years beforehand because there's no there's no expectations there's no comparisons yeah, yeah, yeah. there's no mm. old characters that have to show up because you can build a new yep yep absolutely well well either way he's done he's gone yeah. and it must hurt him a little bit too to have people be like on the in the message boards and online and social media and on reddit threads being like i can't wait till we're done with the skywalker trilogy or skywalker storyline when he is one of the central parts of that skywalker storyline it must really bother him to hear that so in the long run it's good for him to just kind of let that go and move on it doesn't mean we won't hear him in video games possibly down yeah. the road or what have you but uh, certainly on camera i think we're done with luke after this uh ep episode maybe mark hamill's luke 
Yes, because, fair. Okay, fair. You know, because I would just sure. say never say never to where if they want to do something for Disney Plus down the sure. line, well, is is it in the works now? No, yeah. but I but I would say. You know, I, there's been a big movement for Sebastian Stan. Yep. As, have you ever seen that comparison? Yeah, I have. Yeah. And no, it looks pretty good, but I don't know. I, I'm a big, uh, I'm, I'm hardcore rooting at this point for new things. Yeah. And as I got all caught up, as you were saying, you know, you want to go back thousands of years. Like, yes, I want an old Republic movie, but I also don't want to not get to explore the future because what's the special thing that has been happening in this franchise and that's happening even more so right now is the fact that these main characters are building the foundation for a new generation and I want to see the examples they set mm. put into action. And I don't disagree with that, but I don't need to see it today. No, I don't, no, no, I don't, no. Need, I don't need to see I, it. I don't need to see it in five years from now because I think because that's the whole point is that if you give me like the old, old Republic first, show me all stuff like we still have not seen a Sith army. We have not seen a Jedi army. Yep. We have mm -hmm. not seen a lightsaber fight on each other since Force Awakens, yep. for God's sakes. Yep. So I want to see that again, and I want to be like, because I and not everybody is is into the Force and the lightsabers, but there are a ton that are, and I think it'd be nice to explore that. And then 10, 15 years from now, then or Disney Plus now hey, adds a new know. thing. Now you can have a brand new series because let's say, hey, you know what we're going to do now? Now we're going to follow Finn. John Boyega signed mm -hmm. up for an eight-episode arc on Disney Plus, and we're going to do something yeah. there. They have that ability to do that inside of that future mm -hmm. that you're talking about. The cool thing I keep thinking about ever since that uh, amazing Las Vegas Comic Con panel with Daniel Logan, because we were talking about The Mandalorian and how, yeah, Boba Fett is probably not in that, but what Star Wars, like all mm -hmm. different Star Wars, it doesn't matter what time period it's set in, and it also doesn't matter if it's Disney Plus in a TV show form or on the big screen, just how certain individuals don't need to be directly involved in order to be affected by something right. like he was busy explaining you know what would be really cool if the mandalorian achieved this he said something along the lines of we'll show you stuff about mandalorian culture so you further understand why yes. boba and, J and Django fed wanted to take on that mantle and that look and that armor and those ideals right, cause and Bo, cause, because Boba's not a Mandalorian yeah, right. that's right. like the coolest thing about Star Wars is that it could not be connected but it still is it still all matters well that's right and I think that it's going into Mandalorian conversation here is that from remember Favreau was an original trilogy guy that's where his mm -hmm. love from the movies came from. And to him, Boba Fett was a Mandalorian. So one of the, the rumors behind the scenes was that when he was, and, he, and they talked about this at the panel, that he kept writing to, uh, he wrote a script. Mm -hmm. And the script, what was rumored was a Boba Fett thing, that he sent to Filoni and he sent like Boba, and he was wearing like his Boba Fett socks, forever was at the time. But but they had to tell him kind of, you know, remember, because they're prequels, Boba Fett's not a, he's not a Mandalorian, you know? So we got to switch this up. What if it was an original character and he worked through it? But plus the fact, He's worked with Filoni for so long, yeah. uh, and Filoni has made, Filoni's one of the main guys that has made Mandalorian culture uh, in the canon so relevant, right? Mm -hmm. it, look at stuff he did with Bo-Katan or, mm -hmm. or uh, Sabine. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think we're gonna, you're 100% right. You're gonna learn so much about the Mandalorian culture in, in it because of both of their loves for the, for the, I am the culture. hardcore rooting for that because I'm fascinated by it. And you even know, one of my biggest takeaways from that panel at a celebration this year, it wasn't even necessary, I love the footage, but it wasn't necessarily the footage. Right. It was seeing uh, the, uh, the Mandalorian mercs and just oh, right. just like the vibe the fact that like their enthusiasm for mandalorian culture just like radiated out through the entire building yeah well let's move on dave filoni like you uh, yeah, we got to move on i was gonna go we're gonna go more <laughs> into you the say 20 more minutes of this thing <laughs> listen this is one of the there's no, nothing no, going no. on out there there's nothing going on there there. Isn't, i built this whole document for god's sake let's swing uh, into the conversation let's do a new show let's do a new show what's next we keep talking and that's about the director stuff i put this in here to give us because there wasn't much going on some mm -hmm. conversation to have about a screen rant did this whole thing directors <laughs> who should get a star wars movie and what they could be about there were 10 directors listed one of those was dave filoni who just mentioned so we can keep this conversation going but sure, i want to sure. kind of steer it into another av avenue is well what director do you want to see come on to this project that may Maybe is it listed by Screen Rant here? Who are they list? Give me some. Okay, give me some I'll give you list. some list. There's, like I said, Dave Filoni, Guillermo del Toro, of course. Perry yeah. interviewed. He spoke about his Boba Fett underworld story. Justin Lin is one who was mentioned. Joe Cornish from the Kid Who Would Be King and Attack the Block fame. Matt Reeves is a possibility they've thrown out there. Dean DeBloss, who did um, had the How to Train Your Dragon trilogy. Patty Jenkins, of course. She's always at the top of the list for a lot of people. Ryan Coogler. 
uh, is on that list as well. And Taika Waititi topping the list. So well, any thoughts there? Well, Titi's doing uh, Mandalorian. So we yeah. know that he's already we getting, he's, he's going to be a part of it. So, you know, and he, and we know he loves Star Wars. Mm. So it's certainly a possibility. And he's in the Disney family anyway. Mm. So that'll probably happen one way down the line. The question is, though, who are Benioff and Weiss going to give their movies to? Like, is it going to be one director to do all three? Right. Or is it going to be a mix up? Because if they have the scripts, I'm okay with them switching up directors when there's a narrative from start to finish. Right, My biggest exactly. problem with this new An trilogy arc. is that there, there's been no, there's, there, it was, from the beginning, it was, there was never a, where we were going. There was never a plan. So it was always JJ has his first movie, and then he's gone now. So, Ryan, what do you want to do? So now Ryan does a movie, now JJ gets to finish up whatever right. else is there, and you, you're going to walk out going, okay, hopefully, you walk out going, that's a great movie, but there's never a plan. If the rumors are true, if we have three scripts already done for this new trilogy, mm -hmm. then it's easy for me to say, okay, look, these are already done. The producers know what they want to do. So bring in three kick-ass directors mm -hmm. to, to really utilize these scripts and deliver on these scripts. I would like to see Patty Jenkins for sure. I would like to see uh, Ryan Coogler, but I also would like mm -hmm. to see the Russo brothers who were not on that list. And I think the Russo brothers are hardcore Star Wars fans. Mm -hmm. They are, we know that they, they, they're gonna be in charge of, if not the most successful movie of all time, number two. Um, and I think the Russo brothers would slam this thing home. So I would go with the Russo brothers. It's so hard to think about whether or not I would want different directors on each movie without mm -hmm. knowing what the actual story right. is gonna be. but. The reason why I lean towards one individual right now, it's just because Spider-Man Far From Home is fresh in my mind mm. and what John Watts is doing for Peter Parker as, as an individual b being built and having this epic coming of age, not even just movie, like saga. Yeah. Maybe mm. if he makes another film, I think there's so much more growth for Peter Parker to be had on the big screen. So I'm just so hooked right now on John Watts directing three Spider-Man movies that my brain says, give it to one person. But on that list, yeah, I was just gonna say, I yeah, yeah. I just want to make it clear. I agree with that a thousand percent. Yeah. I just think it's less of a risk to do three different directors with three scripts that are already done than because I would much prefer one person take us from one, two, and three it, it, because of everything that you're saying. Because like, look at the the one I was just thinking of. Uh, I just had something in my head that we, oh, the, I mean the Russo brothers. Yeah. yeah. If you look from what they did from from uh, Winter Soldier mm -hmm. to Civil War to Infinity One and then Infinity Two, like. It, their stamp on all this and knowing so much about it yeah. took us into this phase. So I would really like to see one person or two people yeah. do it at the same time. It's, it's a lot of work. It's a lot a of work. A lot of work to direct three movies yeah. like that. The favorite ones on this list, though, for me, I mean, surprise, surprise, Guillermo del Toro. Mm -hmm. Like, just give him anything. Um, I like the Joe Cornish uh, suggestion, too, because mm. Attack the Block is one of my favorite movies in recent years. And I finally did get around to seeing The Kid Who Would Be King. And that's, that's like a fun, family-friendly yeah. romp. And mm. I feel like if you want to do... I don't necessarily think that he would be best suited for an Old Republic movie. But if they wanted to, you know, spin off in another direction, maybe something geared a little more towards younger Star Wars fans, he could be a great option yeah. for I'll that. Say, like, Jedi Academy, yeah. something like that, yeah. But I'll tell you, Del Toro... I don't know if I love anyone more than I love Del Toro, mm -hmm. especially after getting a chance to meet him a handful of times. Yeah. A, a sweetheart of, of a dude, mm -hmm. uh, a very talented, creative writer. I don't necessarily think as a director he's right for Old Republic, if that's in, mm. indeed the movies. Because here's the reason. It's the same reason like when you get a... Same reason I feel like you, how you feel about Tarantino with yeah. like Star Trek yeah. or even Tim Burton with anything that he does. Del Toro style is going to be all over the place, and he's been notorious for the fact that when Del Toro's doing a movie, he wants to do it the way that he's going to do it. Yeah. And in this particular circumstance, you want to have someone that's going to follow the narrative all the way through. The very and, and not like just say, "Well, then he can't be his, his guy." That right? He's got he's got to do what the studio wants him to do. Well, there have been many directors like Ryan Coogler who made his yeah. vision with Black Panther, but still fit the narrative, right? And there's and and I mean, shoot. Peyton Reed, all these guys that have done that, that's what you're going to need for these movies. Now, that's not to say that mm -hmm. Del Toro shouldn't do any Star Wars movie, like a right. standalone thing that, that he can do, like a gangster movie or something like that. Yeah, 100%, yeah. but not this particular. He's the kind of guy where if he, like, I don't care what topic I come up with right now, if he puts his name, like, on the roster,
cast or to direct a particular story, whether it's Star Wars or any other franchise for that matter, he doesn't do things unless he is like wholeheartedly ready to jump into it, passionate like to the core. Mm -hmm. So whatever whatever he picks, if the day does come in Star Wars, I'm going to say, yep, that's the right fit for him because I believe in his choices. Yeah, see, like that's, again, it has nothing to do for me for ever doubting how passionate he's going right. to be about mm -hmm. it. It's just whether or not that passion is right for the old Republic. If, again, this yep. is all rumor. This is all rumor right, again, right. too, like because the thing is, what is it going to look like a Del Toro movie or is it going to look like a Star Wars movie? The same well, what right. what is a Del Toro Tarantino. movie anymore? I, like, I, I know, mean, I know he does have like a fantasy yeah. quality to yeah. a lot of his to a lot of his things, but he's he's got a good amount of variety there at this point. But you can always tell. I mean, and this is a compliment to him as well too. You can tell when it's a Del Toro movie. Mm -hmm. You yeah. can you can feel it. And I think someone who I would be very interested to see one that we didn't bring up to is Alfonso Cuaron. Yeah, yeah Cuaron would be very. Look what he did with Harry Potter. Yeah, sure. And he has such a unique style, and he has a very different style, but. He fit into the Harry Potter world like that. If I you, would never say no to that. I, right. I know. I, I know this is about inclusion nowadays, and I think it's really important. My thing is Quaron, Chad Stahelski, and Inaditu doing a trilogy of movies that Star Wars based in the Knights of the Old Republic would be very interesting because you've got the epic nature of it, you've got the more hardcore, gritty nature of it, and the battle scenes might be incredible, hand-to-hand -hand battle scenes, stuff we've seen in the video games before. Stahelski would be great for that. I wouldn't, and Inaratu might be one of my favorite directors living. I wouldn't want him anywhere near Star Wars. Movie. Really? After huh. hearing his comments on comic book movies oh, and everything, right. too, yeah. he wouldn't want to do it. Yeah, and but he'd it, do it his way. It's not a matter, that's, that's the thing, again, yeah. with this for this particular trilogy, a standalone movie Absolutely. Right, Inaratu right, comes right. in with a take to do something new and unique in the Star Wars world. You give it this particular trilogy. You want to get people are going to paint because Star Wars fans in general want to mm -hmm. have that overall Star Wars feel. And this is again, I think that we talked about this on on Cloud Alive the other day. Mm -hmm. And this is not to start throwing shots at Last Jedi again. I think everybody at this table who enjoyed Last yeah. Jedi can agree. It is the most adult feeling Star Wars movie at all of them. It's it's not really made for kids, this particular mm -hmm. movie. And it's one of the reasons why the toys were d d terrible. The yeah. sales, the sales were terrible. Um, because, and Star Wars always has to feel a little bit of a mixture of both. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's what we need from the lightsabers and the force. And it, it, could, it could fit for young kids, for teenagers, for all of that. And I think that, and I, not to say I don't want to see dark side stuff too. Of course you do. Mm -hmm. um, but I just want to make it feel a little bit more uh, like it used to, and the hardcore fan getting inside of it, and I think Quran could could fit that. Filoni, let's see what happens with Mandalorian yeah, first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know who could fit it, and you know who might have some free time right now? West Ball. Did you watch that mouse guard footage? <laughs> oh, good God, that was cool. All right, that looks this is great. A great and also, this is a great did call, you yeah. see the staff fighting in that? That yeah. to me that says really Star cool. Wars combat. Wow. But also, I know the Agreed. I know the Maze Runner movies aren't for everyone, but that first movie was excellent he knows what he's doing with visual effects and i have a feeling that with a star wars size budget he can make the most of every single penny and i think he can knock it out of the park i think that's a good call because i'll tell you even though because you can't blame you can't blame even maze runners like even it didn't wasn't the huge hit on him because a lot of it was just based off material that a lot of people just didn't really care about right but the the last movie that i saw i don't know what it was called Death um care sure but uh but, but that <laughs> opening fight it's that great. Opening, it's great. Yeah, he's, was, a, he's got yeah. a great eye. He has a good eye. And, and that mouse guard footage was, it made me want to watch the movie. Yeah. I didn't yeah. know what the hell the thing was about. I was like, why'd they cancel? Exactly. When, when, they, when the article came out, it's like, mouse guard's canceled. I go, I was like, can't, can't have a mouse guard. I watched the trailer. I go, why'd they cancel that? Yeah. I'm like, it looks great. And I think that's a, that's a really good pull. But that's why I'm also very, I stand by the fact that I think they're going to announce something by the end of the year. Mm -hmm. Because I think that they announce a director and they, they give the director some time because the more and more you wait, then Star Wars fans are going to be like, who's directing? What's happening? Right. How's it happening? But if, you get, if, if somebody comes out, you know who's directing, then you're waiting for the next word for the person. And give, it's, it's less about the director saying, I'm doing this project, as it then becomes, well, who's in it? Right. And what's it going to be? And all that kind of stuff. And I think you'd announce the director first and actually about the premise first. Yeah. Yeah. I want you to be right so badly just because yeah. I want all the information now, now, now. I just have a feeling we're we'll waiting. I have a feeling we're going to have to wait because yeah. I don't even think that Disney and Lucasfilm are necessarily thinking about the Star Wars franchise first over the success of Disney Plus because this could be a game-changing year for Disney mm, yeah. where it scares me a little, but 
come November, they could just completely like obliterate the competition or the competition's hope for the future because, hey, Netflix has been the juggernaut in the streaming right. industry for quite a while now. And this could, I'm not going to say that this could be the end, but this could certainly be the end of their domination. Well, they're going to have a challenger as yeah. to their championship. A big because they, challenger. The, the, the second one was HBO, and HBO, and that just happens to, HBO yeah. just happens to be there, like, yeah, hey, we're good where we are. We're not yeah. challenging for the title. As where you have Netflix running the game, the game yeah. starting to lose material left and right to other streaming services. Now, this is, again, something we brought up on Collider Live the other day. The first thing that Disney Plus is going to do it's was your second. You can't eat one more plug, and that's it. On Collider Live, no, it's part of this network. It's part of this network. The Collider Live, uh, when we talked about it, um, it's see, you threw me off with, the, with a little bit of the bit. Um, we're, we're, sorry, where were we going there? The, the, we started with what? Uh, the streaming service yeah, stuff. Streaming. The streaming service. The uh, competition. Yeah. yeah. Well, because that was that's the whole point. Is the competition is because if they bring in this this show, whether it's Mandalorian, uh, Loki. Lady and the Tramp, all these IPs that have been created mm -hmm. beforehand, you're going to get p fans of that particular franchise, the Star Wars fans, the Marvel fans. But what they need to do in order to start to overtake Netflix is they have to start making their own original IP stuff. Yes, absolutely. They have to start making because you can keep putting in shows like the Marvel shows and the Star Wars, and you'll get that fan base. But if you want to get brand new people to continue on with your with your thing, you're going to have to come up with original movies, original IP, and it, it's in order to sustain and in order to overtake Netflix, mm -hmm. that's what you're going to have to do. I don't know. I don't. I don't think that's true. And this is like the scary reality that we're in right mm -hmm. now. Is Look at the Avengers Endgame box office. Yeah. You, if you get that viewership, you don't even have to worry about... I mean, that studio is not worrying about producing original content right now. But I'm paying $15 for a ticket for Avengers Endgame once. I'm not paying 8 to $9 every month mm -hmm. and just to see it You know, every month. If it's another... Because of all the other streaming things I have, because the, the question is, do if, if I'm not a fan of Star Wars, if I'm not a fan of Marvel, if I'm not a fan of these things, why do I want to join? That's what I'm saying about it. You can go Go after the Marvel fans. You can yep. go after the Star Wars fans, but you want to go after the people who don't give a crap about those movies. You got to. And other every streaming stuff. service has their original content. Amazon yeah. Prime has a number of original series. Right. That they did Hulu even with that Looming Tower series. Those are original series. Yeah. They put HBO does the same thing with Wichita Chernobyl. So yeah. everybody has to do that. You I think do it. Disney certainly has to do that at some point down the road. Not right away. Not yeah, yeah. right. Not right away. But they, it's ironic that they are now playing the DC to right. Marvel game in the DC spot. So you don't they're think, having to catch up to You don't think they need to uh, develop original I, IP? I have a feeling that what they would do before I, I think there's going to be some original stuff in the mix i don't mean they're going to completely cut right. it all off but mm. i don't think they need to as much as let's say netflix because i think what they're going to do or at least what i hope they do with disney plus yeah. is that they use these incredible franchises they have like star right. wars and like marvel and they use disney plus as a platform to explore more creative opportunities take bigger risks that right. they can't be with the do with the big budget movies and find new viewers that way well yeah i mean i think that that's for sure but i think that that's you're right netflix has to do original ip because they're going to start losing all the other ip to people who mm. want to put it on their streaming services so they're in a place where they have to do this and they've been doing it so much that's the leg up that disney plus has they have all these very popular ips that that's where they can start what i'm saying is that eventually i think at a, on, just on a creative standpoint yeah. you want to make new things because what's your stranger things you know what's your it's it's yeah i already uh, we mandalorian was super popular loki is so popular. we're gonna do a, a uh, an obi-wan series we're gonna do all that and people will get super excited but it's again if i don't give a crap about marvel or star wars or or even like the live action stuff but i care oh you know what i got so and so on board to do this now the one problem that they have though is that they can't do super like they can't do a series like daredevil mm -hmm. they're gonna have to put that on hulu um <laughs> So, but so right. that that's the one thing that they have anyway. But doing more family-oriented stuff and more family-oriented movies, yeah. I mean, I just think it'd be, it'd be silly not to. We're doing make something even like a little smaller and more dramatic. Because one of the other directors I had on my list, and I'm going to butcher her name, and I'm so sorry for it because she directed the Mustang. Which have you mm, seen the Mustang? No, it's great. Put yeah. it at the top of your watch list. That is one of the best movies I've seen all year. Her name is Laura de Clermont. Tonner Ray. Yeah, I, sure. I, I don't know how to pronounce Sounds her last right. name. I am sorry. I will learn it at some point when I hear it out loud properly. But 
what she did with the Mustang, it's like I can picture something like that, like that level of like uh, of intimacy and a character arc yeah. and a sensitivity. There is room for that in Star Wars too. I don't necessarily know if that's what they're trying to achieve mm. with with another trilogy, but if she went over to something like Disney Plus and created a quiet story about someone just living on a planet that we've never experienced before, there's so much opportunity there. I agree with you so much there it, it, that this is why I've been saying in for a year that I think that Disney Plus could shift over the popularity of Star Wars onto television way more than even in the film mm. because or the love for it anyway because you're going to see what, what television in general has done for, for or streaming has done for television right they're like essentially eight hour movies and the development of the characters is so much stronger in television than it is in a two-hour film because i think if they ever announce an obi-wan series it's a much better play to do it as an eight or six part series yeah. on Disney Plus because we get to explore exactly what the hell was going on from when he was on Tatooine. Did he feel the sense of Vader st still there? Does he have to go and find Vader, but yet still try to balance mm -hmm. the fact that he's got Luke there too, but make him sure he's not getting found out by the by the Empire because he's trying to be quiet. Does he shut himself off right. from the Force? You know, because, but not in a Luke way, but in a way to where it's like, okay, I can't be seen. I don't want to be seen right now, so I got to shut it off. But is that going to hurt him? You know, there's so there's so many things you can do there, but mm. you can't just do it in just two hours. You got to do it in like six to eight. Yeah. Well, they're certainly spending money for these Disney Plus TV shows, so we'll see if that's something that happens. Uh, let's hit these last three stories in the movie news area real quick, and that is what Perry brought up here earlier. Uh, some fans on Reddit are quickly beginning to comment on the different translations for the title uh, for Episode Nine: Ry The Rise of Skywalker. Uh, we have Japan saying it's. Uh, their, translated is, their translation is Star Wars Dawn of Skywalker. Greece has its Skywalker, The Rise. Latin America has its Skywalker, The Rise. Poland has sta Star Wars Skywalker Rebirth. They went one up there. And then uh, Russia, not to be outdone, says Episode 9 Skywalker, The Dawn. So what does any of this me, is this is this like people are making such a big deal saying that oh this means like a rebirth or a dawn or something or is this just uh, people having fun with these translations? It's just a translation of the title. Okay. What do you think? Um, I mean, it's just translations, but it's pretty much going back to what I had said before, mm -hmm. where I think it's all just like accumulating to be like this is like a new path to follow. Yeah. yeah. All right. What's yeah. next? All right. The next thing we have here is uh, uh, I think it's Carrie Russell. We have next. Uh, she uh, is uh, crying over the script for episode nine in a good way. Uh, said that it brought tears to her eyes. When I read his script that he wrote, and that's J.J. Abrams, I cried. I mean, who knows what it will turn out to be, and I've spoken as a true uh, uh, actress there, and I hope it remains true to what he originally wanted. He's not trying to change it to be something else, she said of Abrams. He really respects what it is. And once again, this is speaking to the Associated Press. So this is good words to hear from her, and she understands as a veteran of the business, just what you read on the paper doesn't mean you're going to see it on screen. Right, so. and it's also, this, they, they've been tight since Felicity. Yes, you know, they're, right. They're, 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 good, they're good friends, and, and he's hooking her up here now in Star Wars, and her costume it's is incredible. It's a badass costume. It's so good. I'm excited to see her in, in this movie yeah. to see exactly what it is that she does. Uh, kind of mysterious, and I want to keep it mysterious until I walk into that theater day right. up. But it's, it's always good to see. I mean, that's... It's different than saying, well, I saw the movie and it's really cool. So I read the script. I like it. Uh, and I hope that it translates over from what I read. Yeah. Uh, but what I read got me emotionally. And, and I don't think that any single person would ever question J.J.'s passion for Star Wars. He's always been a Star Wars guy. He's always been orig another original trilogy guy. Yeah. So it's it's good to hear it's you're also never going to hear them going ah, listen i gotta be honest with you i read the, the script it's crap but i'm excited <laughs> to be in star wars i'm getting paid for it so well, we shot was so much better than yeah. what i read so james yeah. my friend i'm glad he put me in the movie but terrible script i mean just awful um i'm glad i'm only in it for one yeah well, and i really didn't like what happened to my character in felicity what else you got I'll be honest yeah. with you. you see my haircut in this one right oh, yeah, go ahead. it's like liar liar if that happened right yeah. <laughs> that's a good idea for a movie actually an like actress. some sort of like an actor or like some sort of studio <laughs> Liar, liar. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Liar, liar. I want to right. watch that movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sure. But I mean, you hear these comments. Yeah, yeah. Really I mean, I hear it, and you know, they have to say a certain something at this point in the run. But I'm glad she cried. I want to cry, right. and yeah. you know, movies change significantly from script to screen and post production. So mm -hmm. whatever she read in that initial script, I want him to hold on to at least some of that in the the long run. Cool. Yeah, me too. I, I like the fact that she said this, and it makes me feel like just from the trailer, like seeing the trailer, I got emotional watching the trailer. So. 
uh, this means this feels like they're going back to this relationship situation that that's going to be what drives the film yeah will we get star will we get lightsaber battles yes will we get battles in in space absolutely but it's about the heart of star wars which is what always brings people back is the relationships between the characters and it's not just heart which you're right it's adventure yeah, yeah. and adventure. i want it wants it's got to feel like a fun space adventure right. mm. like uh, the it, it hasn't felt like a fun, fun space adventure in a little bit yep. so yep. to get that uh, solo did Solo, Solo had the, sp the fun space adventure, I think, for sure. So I think that we're going to get back to the fun space adventure. Mm -hmm. And maybe that's exactly what she's talking about. But, but like you said, because if you look at that trailer and you have, uh, it, it looks all of our characters are going on these things together. Yeah. There's more interaction. Mm -hmm. I want to see more interaction with all the characters. And I think we're going to get that in the closeout to these characters that JJ created. Yeah. So a well, lot yeah. of them, a yeah. lot of them that he created. Well, all right. So you want to bounce the cannon? Well, not just yet. One last what thing, an interview got? with BuzzFeed, which is the title of this episode. So we've got to talk about uh, it. Uh, Daisy Ridley was asked if she would be part of the next wave of Star Wars movies. She said, quote, I mean, I can say I'm not in the next trilogy. No, I think because Ryan always said, if it's the Ryan one or it's the the guys that did Game of Thrones, I'm not sure. Whichever one it was, they always said it was going to be a separate story, so I'm not, no. So we, we kind of suspected this anyway, yeah. and then an Old Republic story coming out certainly reaffirms that. If um, that's the case. If that's the case, yeah. right. Uh, but with Daisy, it, she, she said not in this one. So it doesn't mean she won't maybe come back as Rey later on down the road, but certainly not in this next movie. She didn't say next trilogy or next, just the next movie. So Daisy Ridley um, and the character of Rey Next to Kylo Ren, my favorite character so far that has been created. Mm -hmm. And next to her theme and everything, too. And I think Daisy really is a tremendous actress and has brought so much to Star Wars. That being said, I don't want to see her anywhere near these, these yeah, movies. Yeah. I want to see a fresh start. I want to see new characters. And But the same thing, like you just said, it's not that I don't ever want to see her. Right. Bring it right back to our previous conversation. If Daisy really popped up in a Ray series after <gasps> on Disney+, Plus <sighs> after the events of Episode Nine, sign me up, right? Mm -hmm. In 10 years from now, they decide they're going to do episode 10, 11, and 12, and it's going to be a, 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 a 35, 40 year old uh, Ray. Sign me up. Yeah. But I don't think we need it right now. Let's move on. Let's find something new. Let's explore either way in the past or somewhere completely different where it's not connected to any of these characters because it would negate what we just talked about. Mm -hmm. here. I wouldn't be surprised if they crack the door open for 10, 11, and 12 eventually That's just because right. they want to have all the possibilities in their sure. back pocket. But I still think it's going to be kind of what I was uh, getting at before, which is fine. I, I didn't expect her to be in anything after this anyway, yeah. or at least anytime soon, but I want to feel whatever the influence is of what she manages to accomplish in this next movie. As long as I feel that in anything that takes place after the events of Rise of Skywalker, I will be very satisfied. Yeah. All right, now we're going to move on to that part of the show that we simply call what's the deal with canon <laughs> and it is everything that connects to star wars inside of the, the video games comic books novels whatever it might be we're going to talk about it john what do you got ea has released a new official extended gameplay footage from star wars jedi fall in order you know e3 a couple of weeks ago we got like i think 10 to 15 minutes got a little introduction <coughs> to force Whitaker being coming back to voice uh, uh, shit I, I, saw. Uh, saw saw Guerrera coming back to force Saw Guerrera hey look the Schmodown puts a lot of characters in your brain Saw Guerrera and now he's coming back to do uh, more of <laughs> this and they released 25 minutes of footage which was so it's an extra 10 minutes of the 15 they'd already added got to enjoy even more of the world Mark Riley was nerding out like crazy on the opposite desk from me yesterday getting to watch this this morning before we talked about it pretty incredible did you enjoy this footage uh, Christian didn't watch it because oh, on okay. purpose because uh, I'm well, already I'm glad I put it on the rundown yeah I'm because I'm sold on it yeah I'm okay. sold on it I'm gonna play it I'm gonna get it the you don't want to get ruined I don't need to. Fair enough. I'm gonna it get, could, yeah, it could spoil it for I, you if you're going to play the game. Because I also saw a lot of it from at, at Celebration. Mm. I saw a lot, and I, I like what I wanted to see from this game wh when I went to that panel at Celebration was what is this story? Who are the characters I'm going to be following? What's the gameplay going to mm. look like? You know, and they showed so much, and they had such a great conversation. I was in. Yeah. So I'm I'm actually disconnecting myself from a, any of this right now because I want to play this game and experience it for the first time. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm sure that it's, there's so many hours of gameplay that you it's 20 minutes. It's 20 minutes. Yeah. But I just don't need to see any of it all because I'm. It's the most excited I've been for a video game since the first Battlefront, which didn't de deliver, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but it wasn't also a story-based game. Right. I'm about the story, 
and I want and the character and furthering the canon, and this like is gonna fill all those boxes. So sign me up. Did you yeah. get a chance to watch? I it? watched some of it. I scrubbed oh. through it here and there. Um, I don't trust myself to actually play it after what I did with Battlefront 2. <laughs> I went out and I bought a PlayStation and everything, oh and my I, ba God. I barely touched. It. I I wow. bought a PlayStation just for Battlefront 2, and yeah. then I barely played it just because like we're watching so much content. There's not enough time, but mm -hmm. watching this footage and knowing everything that we heard from that panel, the only thing I care about right now is just my dream of having a droid like that to like sit on my shoulder and like come around the world with me did you love it i did i absolutely love it i'm not you know i was a hardcore video gamer like late 80s yeah. 90s all through the 90s into 2000s you got to kind of you know vision get, yeah right coleco yeah. exactly tech but do, 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 yeah. do, all that stuff yeah that's what i did but as you get older like you gotta you gotta put uh, you gotta pay bills and uh, so i had to go get regular jobs couldn't spend nine hours a day playing these video games anymore and i kind of just slid into the sports stuff but I've slowly been walking back to this. Dennis has been a real part of me walking back to this door to a lesser degree. But certainly Dennis, like, trying to get me into Red Dead, which was fantastic. And now this looks great. This I can spend some time on. Don't I can limit an hour to two hours where I can spend in our meditation yeah. room and play that game. So I'm excited. I'm it. with you on that one. Because it's story-based like you. I agree with you. That's, that's the whole reason I mm -hmm. want to play. Because when LucasArts was doing the games, yeah. and that was the height of Star Wars video games. There were so many quality. Star Wars games and we've sin since since yeah, the acquisition for, uh, Lucasfilm from Disney this is only the third console mm -hmm. game I know there's mm -hmm. been other mobile games and stuff too, but this is a third console game and two of them been Battlefront you know so it's like and yeah. they they find and, and one of them before this one had a story that you have after I was because the purpose of Battlefront one and two yeah. is not to play for the story it's mm -hmm. to interact with everyone else too the only reason i played to is the story and once the story was done i never touched it and then we but, have vader immortal too right which is not necessarily a console but it's it's, yeah. it's and that game that's my favorite star wars game i've played so far mm. i have enjoyed it quite you, a bit did you wind up doing I the first did. it's great i did the whole first it? episode it's I, so great. I want more now 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 how mm. great is the black bishop that character really is so ev awesome. ever everything looks great black bishop looks great the thing that I am hung up on in that is, this is going to sound ridiculous, yeah. is the sensation of climbing ladders in VR. Like, all I want is just a game yeah. that has me climbing ladders did all day long. Did they turn that back on in here? Because when I did it, it's like you just touched it and you just zoomed up. Did they, no. They must have turned it It, like, up. really gives you the it, sensation that you are grabbing mo something and pulling you yourself yeah, yeah, yeah. up. It's, yeah, great. it's great. Well, the first time I played it, that's exactly what happened. And then when they set it up here the second time, for some reason, every time you just touched the ladder, you would yeah. zip oh, up to the top. Weird. So hopefully that's they change that yeah it's good um, all, right, all right now we'll move on to hearing from you guys and that's just going to twitter you guys have hit the twitter sphere and you're hashtagging at collider jedi council roke has gone through some of the questions and we'll answer them. here we go all right this one uh comes from kyle mcdonough aj mcdonough as much as i like the character of admiral G uh, gal akbar and you know akbar do you know him i've heard of him aside from saying you want it to buy? It's a trap. He doesn't do that much in the movie, so why do people get so mad about his death in The Last Jedi? And that includes the actor who voices Akbar. Um, well, there's a lot. It depends on who you're asking, because mm -hmm. if you're asking someone like me, he's done way more than just do that. Mm -hmm. Whether you're looking yeah. at stuff that he's done in the novels and even in the Legends novels and in the canon novels, and how, what he's done as far as taking his just his species and, and helping out the rebellion. So. That's the uber nerd like myself that's read all this stuff, right? And, and but as far as someone in general who's just a fan uh, of the movies, Akbar is a pretty strong character. He's mm -hmm. always he, he's not yes, he just says it's a trap, but he's maneuvering all those all those ships. Mm -hmm. He's the one that's that's he's the he's the general. He, so he, there there is a lot that he's doing in both in in, in Return of the Jedi that I think that that's why people have the same way that why do people love Boba Fett yeah Boba Fett says mm -hmm. a couple he's more he's worth more alive than dead or whatever the hell he says but yep. there's so many different things that he says that it's just it just kind of comes and goes but he's a memorable character right. so the same thing goes for Akbar. they're they're both iconic that's yeah. that's yeah. what happened to them over time it doesn't matter how much screen time they had that they are pop culture icons yeah. and I feel like if you're coming at it from that perspective or with the addition of all the EU stuff which I'm only lightly familiar with I still feel like you, you feel, 
I remember the first time I was watching it and that happened. I'm like, whoa, did they did they just do that? Yeah. I and I, of... you know, it, it makes sense in the grand scheme of things. You're in a big battle. He's on the ship. Of course, many people are going to die, but whether you you're an important character or not. But give him a close <laughs> it, yeah, yeah. I, I will say right. that they could have done at that's least what that. I mean, it's like because yeah. that was Ken's argument. Yeah. That's what happens in war. Yeah. But we're also in a movie right. towards a pop culture icon like saying, show me his face to where he's for a second. We just lost Akbar because like. Perry said they did him dirty. Did like when you, cause you look at it, you're like, wait a minute, yeah. what happened to Akbar? Oh, he's dead. Yeah. And and but and Leia's floating around in space. Don't worry, she's coming back. Yeah, that is what happens in war. But this is a a, uh, a, movie. a, a movie. So yeah. you got to give people certain moments. The same thing. A lot of people get angry about how Luke died in Last Jedi. That's a very divisive thing. Mm. You got to give him that lightsaber battle. The fact that he has a moment with Leia, but it's not really him. It's a it's a hologram or an apparition that doesn't really give you that feeling of connection, human to human. And that's what people were wanting to have. So you can explain away anything. But the truth is, there's this connection, here, and I feel the same way. I didn't like the way he was done here. I liked Akbar so, so much. From a, was it, a slave calamari or a prisoner as a calamari rising all the way to the right. ranks of an admiral, he deserved a better death, a soldier's death. All right, well, thank yeah. you for the question. What's the next one? All right, this is uh, from uh, a thick, uh, thickest boy with two C's there, uh, uh, at Kluner. Uh, when will there be, when will there be, if there ever will be, a Collider Top mm -hmm. 10 Star Wars villains? Who's making the list? Sorry, we did the heroes a while ago. We did. Um, I, I I don't know the answer to that question. It's more of a Perry question. Than huh. <laughs> I don't know the answer to that question. Well, so I don't know. Uh, I don't know the answer. You got it. All right. Yeah. Perry, next. thoughts? Don't. Adam, cut away from me. There you go. She's talking at him. Put that. the camera on her. I don't know. Uh, well, we did one for uh, the top 10. So if you want to listen to that, you can go to our top 10 podcast. We counted down in Chicago live, our second show, Top 10 Star Wars Villains. I put Anakin and Darth Vader on the list. Caused a lot of anger amongst yeah, people. Yeah, I would. So, Anakin wasn't a villain. Darth Vader was. Anakin was a villain. He killed those little kids. Let's I move. Start, I don't know. No, 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 stay don't there. start. No, don't. No, no, oh. no, we have to. Well, have we don't have time. Where are we going here? What do you mean? We do have time. Okay. So Anakin Skywalker. The good, he says it in episode four, what will be one? The good man that once was Anakin Skywalker ceased to be and became Darth Vader. Yeah. So, excuse me, in, in episode six. Um, so the second he goes, henceforth you shall be known as Darth Vader. Anakin, dead. Now, if you want to say there's an evil mo thing that he did, and there was a really bad thing he did when he killed the sand people and killed the children, sure. But he didn't kill children. Darth Vader killed children. Anakin didn't kill children. So you can't connect Anakin and, and Darth Vader as the same. They're two different people. Because he, he, he even says that name is no longer has any meaning to me. He was Darth Vader. Yeah. So Anakin was never a villain. I'm just conf I'm confused by it. You and I are just on different sides but of this. But, so I because like I think he is not Darth Vader until he puts on the uh, outfit and loses his last connection. Even though he called him Darth Vader? Yeah, because you know what? I can call so you, you Joe Schmo. It doesn't make you, you Joe Schmo. So you, so you know better than Emperor Palpatine. I know. Emperor Emperor Palpatine he's not a real him. person. I'm just doing my analysis of the situation. No. And in my mind, you I think he doesn't know. In my mind, he doesn't get to decide who Anakin is because Anakin is a strong person in his own right, gets to have his own identity when he wants. And I don't think he fully embraces being Darth Vader until he loses the connection to Padme. When she dies, he's told she dies, and he puts on the Darth he's Vader outfit. Then he's fully Darth Vader. Until then, he's still somewhat Anakin and can be somewhat redeemed. Here's the only argument that I would make for you. I wouldn't say that because he's already Darth Vader at that point okay. but what i would the one argument you could make before he becomes Darth vader yeah. cuts off sam jackson's hand tosses him out the window right that but even then as anakin he says what have i done and then he goes boop i'm a sith lord now i'm darth vader let's make it work so he did he did a couple of despicable things as anakin but i don't know mm -hmm. if i put him up top but anyway it's a it, very curious what do you guys think is was anakin a villain or was darth vader the villain uh and would you how far up would you rank him yeah. in a list that we'll never do here apparently so, uh, <laughs> what's next? you never know don't close the door i don't that. know those, i have no those, idea that top 10 and at a point top 50 series was just like an incredible undertaking yeah, for is. this whole office so if and when the time does come we're always discussing right. different creative mm -hmm. opportunities so you never know we never are know. just right, so very tuned. busy producing yeah. content follow perry on twitter and she'll let you know exactly when <laughs> there you go. What's, what's next? That's right. Thickest boy. You can get even thicker. All right, Jason last Smith. One. Last one. Uh, uh, the last one? Mm, okay, I like this idea. Well, we mentioned it earlier, and this is from Joe Self, at Tweet Joe Self. So far in the movies, the only person to see mm -hmm. a Force Ghost is Luke. So in Episode Nine, who's going to see Luke? Ray, Kylo, or both? I think both. kind of answers, yeah. I think Perry said it before, too. Yeah. I think because there's two reasons why I think this is, is going to happen. Okay. 
One, Ray's going to see, see, I think not only she's going to see Luke, I think she'll see Yoda also. I think so. Mm. They'll, they'll be talking to her, and that's kind of where she's Even though she doesn't know who Yoda is. She never met Yoda, doesn't know Yoda. It's a year is. later, man. There's been, there's okay. been an introduction. I'm sure Luke came to her. So Luke has been coming to her for quite some time. I think time. so, yeah. Okay. I think he's been teased. That's what I got from the trailer. Um, so and I think Yoda probably they passed on everything that they know. So I think she's seen probably, and in, in novels, you'll probably learn that she saw everybody. Yeah, probably. You know? But Kylo is the more interesting one, and there's two. So the question is, one. the one thing that Luke said to him was that he'll be there, and it almost seemed like he was going to haunt him, right? Mm -hmm. So will he see him and have conversations with him there, or will that inevitable redeeming of Kylo that's going to happen? No! I'm telling you, uh, it's going to happen. Uh, no, no. And when that happens, no. is that when he sees him? So I would think, I would actually prefer if it was the beforehand. I would like that they, he just, he's just showing up, he's having a conversation, he can't do anything about it, uh, and, and instead of just the, the redeeming thing. Because I'm telling you, that's going to be the only problem episode nine. When I watch it, I'm going to go, eh, there's the I lazy I don't think move. it's going to be a straightforward redemption. Like, I really mm. do think that this new, this new, like, Jedi that I keep talking about, I think it's some sort of, like, very even balance between the light and the dark, and it's going to be kind of mm. Luke in between mm. the two of them bringing, bringing yeah bringing yeah, the them together Jedi. in a way that creates the ultimate balance we'll see what do you think well, i think great jedi certainly and uh, uh since ahsoka tano in rebels i felt that that uh, theory was in play as a possibility so a lot of people reacted that way and felt that skywalker could be the name for a new jedi and that would be great a new jedi order would be great it's a way to get away from the skywalker storyline while still having the skywalker story have sure. some kind of connection if they open the door for the 10 11 12 which you mentioned perry so uh for me I, I always find it fascinating that only luke saw force ghosts so maybe this has all been in luke's head from the beginning maybe appears no, but he's we'll not see. the only one, though. Well, who else? Uh, well, in Yoda, canon, who Yoda, has seen him? Yoda, Yoda has seen him. Uh, Obi Wan saw it in it, saw it in uh, Qui Gon Jinn in in the what's the, sh the the short novel the short stories. I always think. Yeah, fourth, yeah, I know exactly you know, what you're talking about. about. He's not. He's yeah, not the only right, one that's seen enough. it. He's, okay. a, he's the only one that's seen it in the movies. Okay, that's yeah. Okay, that's what I. And so with Kylo, um, I don't know if he's gonna see Luke, and if he does, I think he's not gonna be as fooled like he was by Luke at the end of Last Jedi because he's also had time to come to terms with what happened and can grow and mature as well, just like Ray has. So I don't think he'll fall for it in the same way. If he does get redeemed, and God, please don't redeem him, I think that's when he sees Luke. Was it from a certain point of view, or am I, I saying so. the wrong title? I think you're right. Okay. From a certain point of view. Yeah, I think you're right. Uh, anyway, that's the show here today, Star Wars show. That's what we do here on Collider Jedi Council. I'd like to thank first... Grand Moff Nemiroff, thank you for joining us always as always. Always happy to be here. What's thank going you for on? having me. Movie in. talk, obviously, every yeah, day at 3 p.m. Yeah, movie talk, every day 3 p.m. PT live. What else is going on? Ladies' night is oh, alive yeah. and thriving. We just had Jesse Buckley on, cool. and I'll just tease something for way down the line. Jillian Bell for Brittany Runs a Marathon oh, might have sweet. come through the studio. So nice. all, that's a very special movie to me. So that opportunity, really, I was just beyond thrilled. The outlaw John Roca. Hello, everyone. Yeah, yeah, you, you can find me at the Roca mean. Says on Twitter and on Instagram. And uh, mailbag. Collider uh, mailbag this. This weekend, I got Ash Crossan. Everybody loves Ash Crossan. Her. And Joseph Scrimshaw, two Star Wars aficionados coming on to join me to answer questions. And also tomorrow on the Collider Conversations podcast feed, The Deep Cut, I have the lead of yesterday, that movie that's coming out, the Danny Boyle movie, Himish Patel. Stop by to talk to me about 45 minutes about nice. the movie, his career, and what he's trying to do, and what he's trying to symbolize as an actor of color in the world now getting some prominence. So a good conversation with him. So don't miss that. Awesome. And also don't miss Collider Live every single day here from Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. Ending out the day, however, excuse me, the week on Friday, it's our one-hour show, so check that out for sure. And if you haven't gotten tickets for Comic-Con, and you go to Comic-Con, make sure at July 20th, we're doing our movie trivia showdown match with Rachel the Crusher Cushing, and we're pushing it back because we know that Marvel's going to wind up being there, so we're pushing the event back to around 8, 8.30. The, the exact time will come out pretty soon, so that way you can get your tickets to showdownlive.com so you can see Marvel and pop over see us we're doing a meet and greet and everything there too so thank you guys for joining us for perry and john may the force be with you always